over here and help me uh, do that so that I can put up the slides for everyone to see. But yep, so just made you the presenter, so you should be able to do it now. Okay, maybe that is there a special button. So, on the bottom of the screen next to a uh, video, there should be. A no, for some reason, that's not popping up. Okay, well, just give us one second. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, one second, Joe. <laughs> and community. Don't worry, we're gonna get this right. Oh, the, the our system is gonna have to shut it down and reopen so I can share my screen. Is that okay, Joe? Uh, that should be okay for you to join back in. I'll be right back. I will put up the presentation again. Sorry for the delay, everybody. It should just be a couple more minutes. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to share. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. All right, I got thumbs up here. Thank you guys for your patience. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone for joining. I'm just pulling my, my notes at the same time. So welcome to everyone. I am here to present about my business, I and I Rose Garden. Um, we're super excited to be presenting this meeting, this community forum for me personally feels like a long time coming don't have a ton of time to go through the presentation. So I'm just going to get right into it. The presentation is going to be broken up into like about 3 parts tonight. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, my business, my vision, our mission, all of that. We'll tell you specifically about our plans for 22 Birch Street and how we're trying to create a destination there. And then we'll talk specifically about community engagement and our commitments to the Rosendale community specifically. So getting uh, right into it, you know, everyone knows we're here to talk about a cannabis brand tonight and I. I guess I would say that my, my biggest goal of this presentation for, for everyone in the audience, specifically the community and people that aren't familiar with the brand, is to really demonstrate to you tonight how our brand and the opportunity and the experience that we're creating at 22 Birch Street is different from what you've experienced in the past, specifically at other dispensaries. Um, we consider cannabis plant medicine. I grew up, uh, my parents are Rastafarian. They raised me Rastafarian. I've been around cannabis my entire life, and I've never been around it in a way that where it carried stigma. It was always a plant, and it was always used as medicine. And that's kind of what we're bringing into the business. We're trying to create more understanding around the medicinal aspects of cannabis, even for recreational users, because, you know, there's a lot of terminology that goes around, but everybody who uses cannabis uses it for medicinal purposes. And we're trying to expand the understanding around that. Of course, we know that cannabis is a billion dollar industry. It's the last cash crop. It's also an opportunity to generate wealth for people of color and specifically black people, people that look like me. It's, uh, you know, something that we've been disproportionately disadvantaged because of. And 
And so we believe that there's a major opportunity. I come from a background of community engagement and doing um, community service, community organizing work. And as someone who struggled in that work because I didn't have the finances to do the work I wanted or couldn't execute the type of vision that I wanted, coming into the cannabis industry was a huge opportunity in terms of generating wealth. And of course, we really want to create a, a community of educated and empowered consumers. We want to make sure that people learn about cannabis and they feel empowered to use it wherever they go. They understand it. There's so much language in the cannabis market. It can be very gimmicky. But again, we want to make sure that people understand it from the perspective of the scientific and medicinal aspects of the plant and not just, you know, oh, are you coming in to get a joint or a pen or whatever? We really are here to take it to the next level. So a little bit about, you know, the vision and the mission of I and I Rose Garden, as I mentioned, or maybe I haven't even said it, but we do consider ourselves a luxury brand. Um, the products that we create, the experiences that we create, because we consider ourselves uh, a, a brand that is here to create wellness experiences. And even though our store will be a retail store, we'll still be creating an experience there. And I'll get into that a lot later, but our goal and, and everything that we do is to bring the, the tradition and even the ancient aspects of cannabis medicine to the forefront of the industry today because we want to see it expand well beyond what we're seeing in the industry right now and we consider ourselves a, a premier type of brand we consider our products premium products and we also prioritize creating a really supportive environment for the people that come into our space and that want to uh you know engage in and partake and consume cannabis we want to make sure that they feel supported in that because it is you know a drug it's something that we've all been raised to believe is a class one drug and so that can be kind of intimidating for people now the the language is changing obviously we're working through destigmatization that's a huge uh, mission and part of the work that we're doing but again we really want to make sure that we're creating a supportive environment for people and that's just one way that we feel like you know our brand is a little bit different to give you guys a little bit history about me and this brand you know I, i've i've honestly been doing this work since 2017 i started this brand as a as a cannabis yoga studio in my backyard. I live in Roslindale on Poplar Street, where I've lived my, since I was four years old. And, um, you know, that's what I was doing for several years. Uh, and pretty much since cannabis became legalized in Massachusetts, I've grown my own cannabis in my house. I've been around it so long. And so I was really excited that it became legalized. But I also noticed that the, the industry itself was not doing a great job of educating people. And I really felt like we need a space where people can come and be educated and feel safe if they're going to be using cannabis, especially for the first time. You know, it is a social kind of experience and we wanted to create that opportunity for people. I wanted to create that opportunity for people. And I did. I was kind of um, doing it on my own through 2018. I started working with some other cannabis brands in 2019. Didn't really like what I saw in the market, especially around black ownership and black people working in this industry. I realized I really needed to figure out a way to do this myself. There's a lot of um, vulture out there in terms of investors and people who say they're offering you an opportunity and they're not. And I realized that I really needed to figure out a way to build this company, but to build it myself without, you know, going to these big investors and getting millions of dollars and basically selling my entire brand before I can even do anything with it. And then in 2020, the pandemic hit. And when that happened, um, obviously, you know, everything changed. I couldn't really do yoga anymore. And I put out a call to my community and I said, hey, if I start selling these or delivering these vegan edibles to you guys with that, you know, would you be interested? And it, they were so interested that here I am sitting before you saying, hey, we're ready for a product manufacturing license and a retail spot and we're good to go. We need to make this business legit. Um, and it's not just me anymore. It's we actually, because I have a whole team of people working with me. You know, I am from Boston. I, I went to Boston Latin School. I went to Northeastern University, got my master's in public health there. Um, and I've worked in the city many, many years. And I also have an amazing team of people. I've got Ryan. He is my marketing guru. He's a friend who went to Northeastern University as well. He does all our branding, all our digital. We've got Mo. She's our operations person. She's actually a California native. So she knows about operation cannabis business operations from, you know, the pros. Um, we've got Angela Driscoll. She's our finance person. She's a CPA candidate. She has her master's in accounting. She comes from an auditing background. She keeps us compliant. She 
keeps us good. And then one of my best friends, Michaela Duffy, also my first investor. She's our business and strategy advisor. She's been with me since day one. Those people are also all in this room here, um, supporting and kind of helping me emotionally through this. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my team. And the thing about my team that I really just want to stress to everyone is that Every single person that I just told you about, they are so committed to the education and the destigmatization de of cannabis. They are so committed to creating generational wealth for people of color. They're cre committed to creating opportunities for people in this industry, and they're committed to expanding this industry beyond what we have typically seen in the dispensaries up until this point because quite frankly we're over that, the offerings that exist in the dispensary we believe there's so much more that cannabis can do and you know it's unfortunate that some people have so much stigma around cannabis because as i know it and as everyone around me knows it it's truly a medicine and it's a it's a plant that grows in the ground and so we are so excited to just kind of be expanding the offering and that's finally i get to tell you a little bit about the concept that we have this idea for 22 birch street you know like i said um right now in in general social consumption is not up so we're mostly focused on um product manufacturing and creating this retail location we are proposing a retail location, but again, it's not a dispensary. Um, it's really going to be a bakery and an apothecary. And just to give you guys a little bit on that background, the bakery of it all is uh, vegan edibles, vegan fresh baked goods. Everything we create is fresh. Um, I have a lot of recipes that I'm really excited about and that I've been using, they're tried and true. Um, the apothecary aspect is going to be a combination um, of cannabis and other herbs that I've used throughout my life and pairing them together because cannabis, the science of cannabis, the terpenes of cannabis pair really well with a lot of other herbs. Um, and so we're excited to kind of bring that education to people and bring that really unique offering to people. People will be able to come in and get customized pre-rolls. They'll be able to come in and get fresh baked goods. Um, and, you know, it's like I said, this is a different experience than what anybody has seen. I, I know this at any dispensary out there. Um, there's literally just one bakery in the entire, one cannabis bakery in the entire U.S. and it's in Chicago right now. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, the vibe that we're trying to create, the energy that we're trying to bring to the space is about healing. It's about wellness. It's about um, expanding our understanding of this plant beyond what we are so used to seeing and educating people and creating space and um, moments where they are experiencing something different, where they're really comfortable, they feel safe about the plant, they feel knowledgeable and empowered. Um, yeah, so we have uh, two licenses that we're proposing. We're proposing a product manufacturing license and a retail license. Uh, the first license that we would go for is the product manufacturing license. A little bit about our phased growth. I, I do just want to go back and kind of hit home that um, the, the investors of this company are all local uh, people. They're all my friends. They're my friends and my family. Um, and it's not like other cannabis companies that have been able to go out and get you know millions of dollars in, in investment money. In fact, I always came from the background that if you wanted to start a cannabis a uh, retail store in Massachusetts, you would need like $2 million in order to do that. And a, and a lot of people probably do, but that's certainly not our budget. Um, that's not what we're working with. However, we are really, really well resourced in the way that we have so many um, different people work or not different people, but the people that I have working with me, my team, they're really well knowledge in this area. And even though we don't have a ton of resources, we know that this is the way to do it. And that's why we're phasing the growth by starting with the product manufacturing license. We'll get the product manufacturing license, hopefully as soon as possible. We will start getting our products out into the dispensaries at our wholesale. And then once we generate some revenue from that, we'll be able to build our bakery upstairs at 22 Birch Street. The um, bakery experience is going to be uh, a very concierge type experience. When people come in, they'll be they'll have a concierge that's been assigned to them, and that person will kind of go with them and take them over to their pre roll bar. They'll they'll work with them and get their pre roll set that they want. Then they'll take them over to the bakery. They'll talk to them about what we've got there. Then they'll check them out, and then they'll check out with security. So it's an experience that we're creating. And I'm someone who I really care about the way things look. I care about the way 
things feel. I don't like cheap things and we're not a cheap brand. We're a luxury brand. So we're going to take our time and make sure that we build that bakery aspect out right, that that experience feels good for the people who step in there and also that it looks good from the outside looking in. We want that's really important to us. And further to like this phase growth, it allows us to build the team the way that we want to build the team. The team will start very small. The people that I introduce you to, those are the people that are going to be working in the shop. Those are the people that you're going to see there, um, at least for the first year or two. And then as we continue to expand and, and generate revenue, we'll be able to do the type of diversity inclusive hiring that we are intending to do. We'll be able to pay people at the rate that we want to pay people, make sure that we can provide the right benefits for people and that we're um, really, really taking care of that way. We also want to make sure that the people that come and work for us have opportunities to have equity in our company. So there's a lot of um, stuff there that, you know, it takes time to build those things out if you really want to do them right. And we really believe that's important. Uh, you know, we have heard, we're certainly aware of um, some of the concerns that have been put out in the community. We do want to let you guys know, you know, like I said, I've been kind of doing this for several years, just out of my mom's kitchen, basically. I promise you guys, there's no, there's nothing um, scientific happening in terms of the extraction method that we're using. It's the most basic extraction method. It's nothing that I couldn't do right here in my own home. Um, there's really no concern there in terms of you know anything like blowing up or anything like that we know that you know smell is something that we always hear when it's cannabis going in and i get it um but we are doing so much to prevent any type of smell that would disturb the community in any way the only time that that would even be possible is when we're decarboxylating our cannabis and even when that's happening we will have all types of kind of um, smell proofing happening and mitigations that co connect right into our existing HVAC system to make sure that um, it's not a disturbance to the neighborhood. We'll plan our schedule accordingly so that, again, we're not disturbing the neighborhood. We've spoken with our landlords, we've spoken with our neighbors, and we're willing to be continue to be collaborative around that. And then lastly, we've heard a lot about parking. We know that that's an issue. We know Rosin does where it gets kind of tight on the weekends. I do want to say that, you know, we will be extremely communicative with the people that are coming to visit us in terms of where they can park it, whether it's the municipal lot or, you know, other places. However, I do want to mention that we are creating a green visitors incentive program to really encourage people, especially, you know, we want our Rosendale neighbors to walk over and see us. We want people to hop on their bike. We also have so much public transportation around us and we want to encourage people to take public transportation to come visit us. So we will have that type of incentive there to encourage people to come and, you know, see us that way. Um, another main concern is, you know, security. Of course, we'll have a full time security guard. We have a uh, state of the art security system going in. We have a security company that has worked with several cannabis dispensaries before that is supporting us through this process. So, you know, we know that we're, we're good there in terms of, you know, our, our external cameras, our internal security, all of that. The main thing that we really want to hit home to, to our community is that there will be nobody underage coming into our store. They won't be able to get into the store because there will be multiple security checkpoints. But even if that was possible, they wouldn't be able to get out because there's multiple security checkpoints going out as well. So we have um, several ways to prevent any type of diversion um, by people underage, or anything like that. They, it will be extremely restricted. Uh, this is honestly for me like the most exciting thing that I'm here to talk about is just Roslindale because like I said, I've lived here since I was four years old. I've seen this neighborhood go through several incarnations. Like I remember Jack's, don't even come for me. So I am so excited to be building up this neighborhood. I will be honest with you. I feel like my business is gonna make Roslindale a destination on the map. People are gonna wanna come from all over. I already have people who come to my yoga classes from Rhode Island and New York and Connecticut and other places. So I know people are going to be excited about this business. I hope that we get to continue to expand and grow here in Roslindale. You know, if that is the case, I know that it will just be even more of a beautiful opportunity for Roslindale and the, the businesses that exist here. I know that the businesses are excited to have me. I know that there's so much opportunity uh, for collaboration and we're really super excited about it. We're really super excited. We feel like that spot that we got, 22 Bird Street, it's the best place that we could be in Roslindale Square. We are right across the street from a brewery. Um, you know, the, it's a plaza. I know that there are concerns about, you know, it being a closed off plaza. 
again, it's right across the street from a brewery. So I'm just going to keep it there. Um, and, you know, we just want to make it clear that we are so committed to safety and to creating, you know, environmental sustainability in this neighborhood and this universe because we love it. Um, you know, we're creating a, a, a mindful brand. I know that I've heard concerns about, you know, exposure. I guess there's, you know, again, across the street from a brewery. However, it will be completely, you won't be able to see in the shop. There will be no exposure into the shop, no public exposure. Um, the, the, the windows are going to be even darker frosted than what they are now, and the curtains will stay up. So, you know, our, our branding, we just put out our new logo on our Instagram page if people want to go and check it out. There's no, you know, cannabis insignias on there. Of course, it's compliant with the C Cannabis Control Commission of Massachusetts. It's really simple simple, really, um, I think, beautiful, and I'm excited to have it in that neighborhood. Um, and of course, we just want to be a partner in this community. We want to be a, a part of the, the growth and the vitality of this community. I come from a really strong community engagement background. I worked for Northeastern City and Community Affairs. I worked for um, the Center for the Study of Sport and Society, and I could go on. I could do my whole resume, but I've been in this community working in community engagement pretty much my entire life. So that's not going to change here. This is just now finally a platform for me to do community engagement in the way that I want and create the community that I want in the place that I've always lived. So I'm super excited. Um, that's our presentation. Really excited for the questions and the comments that are coming. Okay, I'm going to, uh, so nobody has their hands raised at the moment. I'm going to um, essentially just start from the top and give everybody a chance, but as I do that, um, please raise your hand or ask a question in the in the chat. Okay, I'm starting to see some hands hands go up. Hi, Jen Leggett. Yeah, um, you're unmuted. If you have any comments or questions, sure, I'd love to make a comment. Um, my name is Jen Irby Leggett. I own the Leggett Group um, in Rosendale. We've been um, in Rosendale for about eight years, and I'm really excited to stand up in support of this business. Um, I'm incredibly impressed with this really thoughtful business plan. Um, I imagine that the um, three to 500 clients that come to see us every week um, and find parking and take public transportation to, to take care of their wellness will also want to come visit you. I know yes. we've brought more business to the square. I've really loved being part of Rosendale Village Main Streets and the business community who are the, um, the folks that alerted me to this um, meeting tonight. Um, I'm thrilled to support another woman-owned business. I'm, I'm a white woman, but I'm thrilled to support a black woman um, starting a cannabis-based business. It's been really upsetting to see the licenses go um, not to people of color. And um, honestly, I'm incredibly impressed. I want to be a customer and whatever I can do to support you, um, please let me know. So thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come to this meeting and I'm really, really impressed. So I'd love to see this happen. Thank, thank you, you Jen. Jen. Hi, Jamie Soretti. Hi, uh, <laughs> this is actually not Jamie Soretti. This is Tate Williams. Um, I'm Jamie Soretti's husband. Um, Jamie had to jump off for another meeting, but she really wanted to be here. Um, I also wanted to be here because um, Jamie and I are actually neighbors to Kijana. Um, we've lived next door to Kijana and her family for about five years now. Um, and so Jamie, I've been to Kijana's yoga classes before. Jamie is a regular um, student of Kijana's. Um, and I, I want to say a few things. So one, she's an amazing neighbor. So just from like a neighborhood standpoint, like she's just awesome. Like um, she's just this, this beneficial presence um, in our neighborhood and she's been nothing but positive to, to live next door to. Um, so I wanted to kind of vouch for her in terms of just like as a neighbor. Um, and then also, you know, she's just like such a great like, business person. And by that, I mean, she's um, a, a proactive member of the community. Like she's not just like out to, you know, to make a buck or whatever. Like she really does care deeply um, about the Rosendale community and about like her neighbors. And she cares deeply about like the people who she wants to help as well. Um, and, you know, that's like exactly the kind of person who you want to be involved in the cannabis business in, in Massachusetts. Um, so like one note on that is like, I'm from, from Denver, Colorado, um, or that's a place I live recently. And I witnessed when they're, um, 
when their cannabis <laughs> business really took off. And, um, you know, it, you don't always have the right people who are running um, the businesses that you want, you know, and Kijan is definitely 100% the person that you want <laughs> involved in the cannabis business. She's awesome. Um, and so, you know, I think it would be this business is going to be an amazing addition to the Rosnell Square. Um, it's going to be a great you know, business for just Rosendale in general. And, you know, Kijana for years now, like she said, has been um, an active part of the business community and also just like the community of Rosendale. So this is just like a logical progression of, of what she's been doing for years now um, with incredible success and incredible thoughtfulness in how she does it. Um, so I just want to put me and Jamie's wholehearted support behind the project. Um, we live on 176 Poplar Street, just down the street um, from the square, and um, we're very excited and we'll do whatever we can to support this project. So thank you, Gijawa. Thank you so much, Tate. Hi, Rob Orthman, you're unmuted. Hi, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I, uh, Kajana, I'm I'm really excited for this too. Um, I think your presentation was really good. I had a chance to briefly meet you on on Friday on uh, Bird Street, and um, as a fellow uh, Boston Latin School alum and as a fellow vegan, I'm particularly excited to to have uh, a location like this. Um, it you know it just strikes me that this is this is really a really you know classy approach. It seems like a really Kind of refined type of establishment you're looking to put together, and um, you know, I think I think that befits um, that stretch of Birch Street in particular. So, I um, I just want to say that that this seems like a really good addition to me, and um, you know, I, I look forward to uh, hopefully uh, coming in your store and and just walking down the street and, and checking it out. So, I don't really have any any particular um, questions at this time. I think that was a nice nice presentation. So, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Hi, Liana Lamatina. Hi, good uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Liana Lamatina. Um, I'm born and raised in East Boston, and I've known Kijana for well over ten years. Uh, we attended Boston Latin School together, a couple of grades apart, um, and I also attend classes at I and I Rose Garden. Um, for the past four and five years, since Kijana created the idea and the concept of I and I Rose Garden, she really has approached it with thoughtfulness, responsibility, and care. She's demonstrated her capability of undertaking the responsibilities of operating such an establishment in this industry, especially in a community like Rosendale. And, and she understands the importance of community involvement, engagement, and citizenship. She demonstrates that by striving to build relationships with the community. And to reiterate to everyone listening, she is a lifelong resident of Rosendale. She is from this community, so it is in her best interest to make sure that she approaches opening the I and I Rose Garden with such diligence and care, not only for the success of her business, but also for the success of the community, which I think is really important. Because when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the cannabis industry. I think I and I Rose Garden and Kijana Rose are the ideal luxury cannabis brand that we as a community should be supporting and welcome in our neighborhoods, particularly compared to large cannabis companies that are backed by million dollar investors that aren't from our neighborhoods, that don't have that same investment. To them, they are looking at profits to Kijana, she is looking at building community, and that is the big difference there. And I just want to conclude and reiterate to everyone my strong support of Kijana Rose and the I and I Rose Garden and her efforts to open up a brick and mortar shop at 22 Birch Street. Good luck, Kijana. Thank you, Liana. Thank you, Liana. She's a lawyer, if you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> Hi, Wyatt Kelly. Hi, um, Y. Kelly. I'm actually a resident of Malden, um, but I didn't grow up in Massachusetts. I've been here for about 20 years, uh, but I grew up in Vermont. Um, and I've been, I found out about the I and I Rose Garden, I don't know, about two or three years ago. And I am a weekly, uh, sometimes bi weekly uh, visitor of the yoga classes. And I've also had the vegan uh, edibles and um, I and I Rose Gardens has been a huge part of my life, uh, you know, to 
you know, kind of a long drive to Malden to Roslindale. And to be honest, I didn't even know a, Roslindale was a city until I heard about the Rose Garden and came down there. And now I'm down there, you know, a couple times a week. So, um, you know, if, if I come down there one or two more times a week or my rent goes up, I think I'll be getting an apartment down there. But I, I wanted to speak to the fact that, um, you know, I come down there because I feel uh, like I get so much out of uh, attending uh, the Rose Garden classes, um, whether it's, you know, healing and, and, you know, I never did yoga before. So doing yoga uh, weekly has really helped my physical health, my mental health. And uh, Kijana and her team really has a, a, a focus and intention behind everything they do. You know, if you ever get a chance to visit the studio or say they run a class, I mean, everything has a purpose and a meaning. Uh, everything she says has been thought out well beforehand, and um, I think you know I'm I'm excited to come down there and also visit the the new shop, um, and and I just feel like everybody in the community will be strengthened for for being in that. And whether you you know want to experience the vegan treats or not, whether you want to try yoga or not, I think just generally uh, Rosendale will be a much better place for for having. Uh, Kijana's business to expand, and I'm looking forward to continuing to come down there. So, thank you for listening. Thank you, Wyatt. Thanks, Wyatt. Hi, Jim. I don't have the last name here, but you're unmuted. Jim, with your hand raised. I believe this is Village Market, Jim. Jim? All right, I'm going to. I'm going to come back to you. Hi, so I don't have a name here, but I have MCSE. I'm muted. All right. M Hello, MCSE, are you there? I'm going to give you one last call out. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me, Joe? Yes. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I had asked a question in the chat, but I was just wondering if this location has any buffer zone issues. Um, that is a good question. Um, I can answer that. Did they? Did the cannabis board give you a clarification on that? I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can. I can get that. But. Yes, uh, there is a, a host agreement that's been executed 0.4 uh, miles away, and that is one buffer zone issue that we have. Oh, okay. Okay, I mean, not that I care. I, I'm just wondering. I was just hoping to see you guys open with as little resistance as possible. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Um, can you hear me? Yes, you're unmuted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much um, for the presentation today. It was very informative and I appreciate that. My real concern is, and this is really directed to you, Joe, um, traffic. You know, you had mentioned, Jana, that you're um, anticipating people coming from Rhode Island. Um, you know, you have, you know, anticipate 350 customers per day. Rosalind Dell is a really small no, community. Oh, sorry. I, I, okay. we we don't have an estimate of expecting 250 customers per day. No. Okay. Regardless, um, Roslindale has a existing traffic congestion issue. And um, Joe, how are you going to address that? Because it's a problem now during COVID. If um, the business is, is is as successful as you hope it to be, um, I'd like to hear um, Joe you address that concern. I would just say that we don't require traffic studies for uh, these establishments. Um, you know, if they're like right now, so the transportation is transportation is working on a number of initiatives, such as the Washington Street bus lane. Um, we do have the municipal lot. Um, there is, you know, parking on the residential side streets as well. That is public parking. People are allowed to park there. So, in terms of the parking situation, those are <laughs> situations where you know people who are to drive in will have opportunities to park there. Um, I don't know if Kijana, if you had any sure any uh, on this from from a business I mean, perspective. 
Yeah, I think, and, I, and I've spoken with uh, many of the other uh, business owners in Roslindale and other people, I, I understand um, that this is a, a concern, um, but I think the other business owners would also agree, you know, um, but and beyond creating incentives and, and trying to encourage people to come into our locations in a green way, um, there's not much else we can do. Um, you know, we, we want Roslindale to be a, a, a a, a thriving neighborhood. We want people to be able to come in. And so, you know, I know personally for me, most of my clients take lifts, they take Ubers, they do take the tea. That's why I'm excited to create a green incentive program because I know a lot of them will take advantage of it. And I know I have a lot of clients in this area. So, um, you know, that's, that's about what I can share on that. Uh, just another, and it's just an add on. I understand that there's another um, cannabis business um, starting up or being opened by green tea. Um, or green leaf, I'm not exactly sure. Um, Joe, another question for you. Does Roslindale merit having two cannabis um, establishments in a in this community? So there's no the the only limit on cannabis establishments is the amount of licenses we have in the city of Boston, and that's approximately fifty two. It comes out to 20% of all liquor stores. So, I mean, there is, there is opportunity for more than one cannabis establishment to happen within a neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Liz Derita, you're unmuted. If you have any questions, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to stand in support of this business as a Boston resident. So I live in South Boston, but I've seen I and I Rose Garden grow since the beginning. It's it's really incredible. I've attended classes there. I love the idea of selling an experience, especially as people get vaccinated. This is really exciting to be out and enjoy a new experience in Boston, especially as Kajana said, like putting Rosslyn down the map. I truly believe in that, and I think it. Uh, me and a lot of my friends would be excited to uh, to get out there. And, um, I know Rosslindale is a tight knit community, so I love Kajana that you said your team is going to be like boots on the ground working in the store. Um, as so many people before me have have stressed, community is a theme, um, and it sounds like a mission of I and I Rose Garden. So I'm just really impressed by the thoughtfulness. Um, especially the green visitors incentive, like hopefully this will help address that traffic concern. So excited for this to hopefully open and um, thank you Kajana for the presentation. Thank you, Liz. Hi, their land, Louis Saint. I, I apologize if I said your name wrong, um, but you're unmuted and if you have any questions or comments, Hi, yeah, you actually said the um, good often, so thank you. <laughs> um, but yes, my name is Sarah Lusant. Um, I am one part of SIAD, the organization, the experience, and um, we are large supporters of I and I Rose Garden. Um, myself being part of the art community, um, by default, we're kind of like stereotype to be drawn to the cannabis community, um, but maybe for the wrong reasons. Um, Cause honestly, I can speak about my own experience and um, after being introduced to Rose Garden and her knowledge, her education that she's brought me through cannabis, her teaching, her practice has literally um, changed my health positively in, a, um, in both a mental and physical way. Um, so having that accessibility at a center like and bringing up Rosalind Bale, like just knowing that there is room for her to expand and to share more knowledge and to be able to incorporate more of the community um, brings me immense. Um, I look forward to, um, you know, Massachusetts having more things of this nature um, and having I and I Rose Garden be, being some of the first um, in the color community, which is huge. Um, so, you know, like I said, this is all forward thinking, and I'm so very happy to hear that, you know, Massachusetts and Boston is very um, forward with this cannabis community, and I would support I and I Rose Garden a thousand times. Thank you, Tharlane. We love you, Kishana. Thank you. 
Hi, Kemp and Carissa Battle, you're unmuted. Hi, Hillary Sullivan. Hey, Joe, thanks so much. Um, I am um, speaking as a longtime Roslindale resident um, and a very active and engaged Roslindale resident. I serve on two community boards um, and have been really involved in the community um, and specifically, you know, looking to support local businesses. Um, I also have the great fortune of knowing Kijana and having worked with her um, in her role at Northeastern several years ago. And what I know to be true about Kijana, I think, is on display here tonight. And that is that she is a collaborator, that she is a communicator, that she is somebody who always shows up with this much excitement and energy, um, but is also really true to her word. And um, I've had the opportunity to walk around with her and um, in, in, it's been a couple of years since we connected, but but have had the chance to introduce her to some business owners and the excitement she has around how she can collaborate, how she can both support local Roslindale residents and bring new people into Roslindale Square is exactly what we're trying to do here. We want to be both a home and a destination. Um, and I think she really has that vision. And so just feel so excited to support her. Um, and I speak not even as a huge user of cannabis myself, but as somebody who who genuinely wants to see businesses, local businesses thrive. Um, and she is the kind of local business that will not only thrive, um, but it will bring other people up with her. So I'm just really excited to stand in strong support of this project. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Cayman Somerville, you're unmuted. Do you have any questions or comments? I do. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Cayman. I am a chief of staff in the clean technology space. Um, and first, I just want to say this was the first time I've heard this presentation, and I am absolutely blown away by Kajana and her team and by their business plan. I work in in entrepreneurship, and this is a really well thought out plan that is very thoughtful and, and um, community driven. And I just am so impressed by that. Um, I have really got to know Kijana through the I and I Rose Garden, um, which I was one of her earliest um, users about five years ago, um, and she has truly made a huge difference in my life, a measurable difference for the past five years. Uh, I suffer from chronic illnesses, and doctors have prescribed yoga and medicinal marijuana to treat them, and I didn't know a lot about that and how to do that. And Kajana has personally helped me work through that. And I've tra I would try I travel 60 minutes from Cambridge uh, and back um, to experience her classes because that's really what they just are. An incredibly healing experience that brings me more well-being than any other medicine has ever done for my illnesses. And I per personally witnessed Kajana change many other lives through her work, as well as well as I've seen her interact with her community. I'm one of the many people who has gotten to know and love Rosendale through my visits to her yoga classes and every other person that I bring with me often reflect on how life changing that experience was for them and become repeat customers. The business community in Rosendale would be incredibly lucky to have her and her team. Um, and I, I cannot wait to visit her bakery and store and it's worth noting that as a customer, I always carpool. Or I take public trans transportation because those are really important values to me, and 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 same with many other of her customers. So I'm I'm incredibly proud of her for all that she's done and accomplished with I and I Rose Garden, and for the company's amazing community, social, sustainably driven mission. And I implore Rosendale to support members of their own community because if they don't support I and I Rose Garden, another less diverse, less inclusive, less community driven, and more profit driven partner is going to move in um, and 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 take the market anyway. So really, just a comment. Um, just really implore uh, Rosendale to to get behind I and I Rose Garden. Thank you. Thank you came in. Hi, Karen Forrest. You're unmuted. If you have any questions or comments. Hi, yes, I do. Um, so I haven't been going to I and I for too long, um, probably about 5, 6 months now, but I have been doing yoga for years. Pretty, um. Pretty religiously, I've been on 2 yoga retreats and um, going to. 
I and I Rose Garden for the first time was just uh, life changing for me. I just I told Keisha immediately following that class that it was the most perfectly curated yoga class I have ever been to. Um, she just has it so dialed in from the moment you walk in, you feel her energy um, to the the aromatic smells that she has going on with essential oils to the um, hot towel uh, spa like ending to your shavasana. Um, I just think it's an amazing experience um, for for anyone that practices yoga. Um, whether or not they participate in the cannabis or not. And I'm willing to drive. I live in Medford and I go now as often as possible, if not weekly, um, because I just found it so compelling compared to um, every other yoga studio I go to. It just doesn't have the it factor that Kijana has. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Hi, Janine Guarino, you're unmuted if you have any questions or comments. Hi, um, just wanted to ex express my strong support for Kijana in this um, endeavor. I've known Kijana now going on 20 years, which is crazy, <laughs> um, but I've seen her thrive and everything that she's um, really, really gone after. And I, I just know that this is going to be um, an amazing, honestly, an amazing opportunity for Boston. Um, I, I grew up in East Boston. I live in South Boston, um, lifelong Boston resident. And I will tell you, like, these are the type of things I want to be seeing as a resident. Um, I, I want to see these licenses going to um, people who are from here and somebody who's a woman of color and someone who, um, you know, this business is so integral to her own culture and the way that she grew up. And um, it, she's just the most perfect fit for a license in an endeavor like this. And um, I'm so thrilled to to see how far she's come. Um, so yeah, just really want to just echo all of the support we've been hearing tonight. Um, on top of all of her fantastic work she's already been doing at I and I. Um, yeah, this is just again. I think this would be an awesome opportunity for Roslindale, but uh, for the greater Boston community, we we really need more representation, particularly in this industry. So, um, super happy to see you you uh, you know thriving right now, Kijana, and I hope this all works out for you. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Janine. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, yeah, this is Lindsay. Can you hear me? Yep, you're unmuted. If you have any comments or questions, go okay. ahead. Sure, thank you. Um, and thank you, Kajana, and your team for a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm so excited for you guys and for Roslindale for this experience. Um, just echoing what everyone said, I've attended yoga. I've had those vegan goods. I am a lifelong butter person, and they are delicious. Um, you guys are in for a real treat. Um, also, I'm, I don't live in Roslindale. I'm from West Rockford, but I live in Medford now, and I'm also a business owner, and I've worked with Kajana. Um, on, you know, ideas, we've collaborated on a supper or two. Um, she's just really, from day one, I have been impressed with her. It's really strong business sense, as well as her good intentions and manners around things. Like it's so rare in the business world to find somebody who actually is genuine and also good at business. <laughs> and she's just really good. She's so needed in this space. Rothmill really needs it. I'm so excited for this. I cannot wait to bring people. Um, and just any concerns, I heard some some concerns. Uh, that's always going to come up with business. She will help. She will work with the community. She will work with elected officials, neighbors, landlords, whoever is concerned. And I'm sure you guys can work it out. Um, I really, really support this. And I'm, I'm just so glad that this presentation is here and that this is happening. And I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Hi, Courtney Pong. Hi, um, Kijana, we have never met, um, but I wanted to voice my support here. Um, I think it is fantastic that everything we've heard on this call so far is that you have had exponential impact, exponential positive impact. I want to call that out. Um, so I, right now, I'm a business owner in the Rosendale Square, and I own the Improv Comedy Theater there. And I want to voice my support as a fellow woman of color, a business owner. Um, something I think I can't say enough that I love seeing is more business owners that are collaborative and are excited to work together to rise everybody's ships. And I think that cannot be said enough about how important it is. And I think one of the one of the best things I would love to see is 
you know, a business community of folks that are consistently thinking not six months from now, but 60 years from now, like, what are we building for, for the next generation? What do we want to leave behind? What's exciting? And I, I see so much of that in you and I think the presentation was so well put together. Um, and I'm just excited to see another fellow center and a woman and a woman of color and really appreciated everything you've done to put time to this, um, project and your presentation. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can't wait to meet you in person. Hi, Susan Harrington. I know you had a you hand up for a little while. Thank you. Um, I, I'm really very upset about this whole uh, presentation. It seems to have been made an issue of race and classism, where Brett Street has already been shut down for alcoholic uh, establishments and is now going to be opened up to an establishment for another kind of um, let's. And uh, I, I'm just so upset. At the, the street's been shut down. It was given uh, supposedly the thought that people could come and let their kids play on it and play with chalk. Now it's people can sit there, which I rarely see anyone sitting there, so they can sit and have alcoholic beverages for ten meals of grilled cheese sandwiches and cheese it. Those of us who are handicapped, there's nowhere to park. I cannot get to my credit union. I'm reticent to go in the evening because I am on a cane. I also, I hear that there will be quote unquote security. However, the amount of security and for what I've seen, the lines in front of the Brookline cannabis establishment and the Roxbury cannabis establishment, there's no way uh, that it's going to be sufficient. I moved into this community decades ago because I thought it was an opening, open, warm, and welcoming, and all-inclusive community. And it does not seem to be that now. I am greatly, greatly concerned about what it's turning into. We've put condo upon condo where no people, people can park. And people, it is difficult to get it. As much as you want to say it's easy to get in and out of the community, it is not. You can't even go to little home restaurants like Blue Star and other things like that because you take it on way of parking on Brick Street so that people can go to the beer the beer places. Um I just I just don't see how this is really going to enhance the everyday and or aging community. And I don't think there's respect given to all, all in general. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can I respond to some of that Joseph? Yes, absolutely. Good. Thank you. I, I do just want to say uh, I, I hear your concerns. Uh, you know, there's only so much of that that I can really respond to. Um, but I will do my best to just say that, you know, first of all, I, I, I know that the lines that you've seen at other dispensaries might seem a little intimidating for this community. I'm really cognizant of those lines. I don't want them in my community either. This is my community. So I just want to stress that because uh, I have lived here pretty much since I, my whole life since I was four. Um, so this is my community as well. And I, I, I understand your clients. That's why we appointment um, specific uh, a, a system for set for appointments where people will have to make appointments to come to us. Someone else earlier made up a number of 250 customers a day. We never said any number like that. We have no expectation like that. We will stagger our growth in the Rosendale community to make sure that the Rosendale community can support our uh, growth because we know what this is. Um, so, you know, that's the best I can do as far as those other concerns. The security that we will have will maintain any type. Of, there won't be lines. There really, you won't see them. Um, that, that wouldn't be able to happen because even the walk in scheduling that we'll have, they'll still have to wait for their appointment. So, um, you know, I, I hope that it eases some of your worries. Again, there's only so much of that that really pertains to my business. So um, that's what I'll say on that. Thank you. Hi, uh, Sue Vey, you're, un you're unmuted. Do you have any co comments or questions? Hi, I apologize because I, I have construction workers at my house and I jumped off for the last three to five minutes. So I didn't hear all of what the previous woman said, but I probably agree with most of what she said, at least the tail end of what I heard. And I'm sorry, because I know this call has been primarily positive and supportive. And in general, 
I don't have issues. The location is a primary concern for me. I think if this whole presentation presented a situation which was not in Rosendale Village, I've been here for almost 30 years, and I just can't visualize the reality of this not having many, many negative impacts on the on village life. I know there are possibilities of positive impacts, but I see the reality of too many negative impacts. Um, it's also, and I also, I, I just, all the, we've got a lot of out-of-towners on this call, and by out-of-towners, I mean people not specifically residents in Rosendale. Um, and so they certainly wouldn't be living the day to day issues that we potentially would have. And secondly, I just. The whole idea of having a dispensary in the, the very small Rosendale village that's very family focused. Just bothers me. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, thank you for that comment. And as I said earlier, our concept is not a dispensary. It's not a traditional dispensary. Dispensary is only kind of a semantic that you could use. Um, again, there is a brewery across the street. Um, the, 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 the closing of the plaza, all of that, I, I really can't respond to that. You know, we, we just got here. We're really excited to be at 22 Birch Street. Like I said, I've lived in Rosendale since I was four, so I've seen many iterations of this community. I've seen many businesses exist here, and I know for a fact that my business is going to bring a lot of positive impact to this community because it already has. And, and to your concern about the out-of-towners on this call, I know that there's a lot of people from Rosendale, and they've also voiced their support so far, too. So, um, you know, I think that the people who are out of town here speak to the fact that people are willing to come here and are recognizing Rosendale as a destination, but I think there's a lot of people from Rosendale that are really excited to have this offering in their community as well. So um, I hope that that answered some of your concerns. Hi, Angela Mitchell. You're unmuted if you have any questions or comments. Hi, um, I've not met Kijana, but I am a user of her products. I want to say that I live in the Mount Hope community of Roslindale, where there was a, a proposal for a dispensary on American Legion. This is very different from that proposal that came to our community, which were outsiders looking to make a profit and using the community to do it. This is community driven grassroots, a woman of color opening a business and I can speak to her products. I'm not. Um, a user of the pre rolls or anything, but I, her, her CBD salve has saved my knee. And it's apothecary, it's healing. And it's very different and her product I have used and my friends have used it. It's gone regional because there's care that's put in it. The little note she puts in it, the way that she has a healing over the over the south and when it's made, it's a different experience. I've, I'm part of Roswell community. I've seen what the presentations have been and they are hurtful to to go through as a, as a community member. And this is very different to me. I understand traffic, but look, they put American down the one lane, so let's not even go there. So this is a community that is welcoming. I welcome a black owned cannabis business. That to me is so important. And that Kijana is part of the community. She's not someone outside, but an outside investor coming in to open a business. She lives here, she's about this, and it really isn't a dispensary, I can speak to that. It is about healing and it's about her yoga and it's just a different experience. So Kijana, I wish you the best and I was happy to be introduced to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela. Hi, Andy, I don't have a last name, I just have Andy here. You're unmuted if you have any questions. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I, I live on Birch Street, so this is, you know, really my community. Um, I was only able to join this call about 20 minutes ago, so I, I missed the whole beginning of the presentation. Uh, but I just had a quick comment and then also a question uh, for Kijana. Um, so I'll start with the, the comment. So I, I have two young children, you know, and um, and, you know, right down the street from me in Birch Street, we have like the ABC preschool, the create art in the community, the karate, uh, the karate business where there's lots of kids, Birch Street, 
um, home and garden where there's like a toy shop in the back. Um, so there's a lot of kids like all around, all over the place. And then also, you know, all those great restaurants that, you know, have the outside seating and that type of stuff. Um, so um, my concern is that, um, you know, that that like really cute, wonderful little, you know, section of, of Birch Street, um, you know, could be uh, transformed. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how, like, you know, this, this could be like a, a wonderful, wonderful thing for the community, or it could be a problem. I really don't know. But the question that I have is, um, um, I don't really understand like the, the yoga and the cannabis connection. I think I missed that, you know, part of the presentation. So I was just wondering if Kijana and I could, um, could speak to that so I could have a better understanding of like exactly what the, the business is and how it yeah. you know, would not. Would not impact, you know, the the restaurant so that it wouldn't smell like, you know, weed down there for all the people, you know, eating and all the children walking by. Yeah, Andy, I, I'm sorry that you missed the presentation and I, I'm happy to have a conversation with you aside to go deeper into our business operations and discuss what I discussed here tonight. Um, and so, you know, as far as the yoga, that's just something that people have experienced. But what I will say as far as the, the children and, and your concern about having kids on the plaza, you know, of course, you must be concerned about the fact that there's a brewery there, too. What I can promise you is that there's no exposure going into my shop. So there's no uh, weed paraphernalia that kids are going to see because of my shop. There's no weed insignias on anything that's going to be displayed outside of my shop. So they won't know that it's a cannabis bakery unless you tell them that it's a cannabis bakery. Um, so, you know, that that's what I can say to that. It, it's not even going to say cannabis bakery on our signage. So, um, you know, as far as children coming and playing in the area and going out, we did talk about how we're going to mitigate smell. Again, I'm happy to talk about that stuff with you, but just to kind of keep the conversation going, I think it, you know, I hope that I addressed your concerns there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, you know, very much. I, um, I mean, I, 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 you know, wish you luck and I'm hearing again, I only joined the call like about 15, 20 minutes ago. And, um, you know, there's a, a there's a lot of, you know, positive comments about, um, um, you know, like a, a woman of, you know, color who's, you know, local opening up a, a business and like that, that's all like wonderful things, you know, congratulations. And I, and I feel like, you know, even though I'm still learning about your services, you know, that you offer, it sounds like something that I would really be interested in. It's Great. just, you know, that particular location, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And I know that that's why we're yeah. here. As a and, and Andy, if I could just be really honest with you, you know, I'm, I'm really proud that we're at 22 Birch Street. I'm really proud that we're on that block. As someone who's lived in Roslindale, like I said, since I was four years old, that block was really where I wanted to be. And when that spot opened up, I was so excited. If I didn't think that my business was right for that place, I wouldn't have done that. I, I, I chose that. I've thought about that. I've meditated on that. Trust me, the universe put that there for me. So, um, you know, I understand the concerns. I hear them, but I want you to know I've thought about all this. I, I have family in this community. I, I am a member of this community, so I cannot stress that enough. Um, so, you know, just me being really honest with you about how truly happy I am to be at 22 Bird Street. I can't imagine myself anywhere else anywhere, to be honest with you. And I guess I, I just had one, one quick question. And I, so, you know, I hear, you know, like bakery, but then also yoga. It, could, could you just, and I know you already gave the presentation, yeah. but would you mind just for like, a, like 10 seconds, just explaining, you know, like what the we, connection is with all of it? Yes. Uh, I teach yoga currently. I do teach yoga. I started teaching cannabis yoga several years ago. And a lot of people that have gotten to know me through the years, that's how they know me. Um, and right now the city doesn't have social consumption licensing up. So we won't have a cannabis yoga studio, but we're creating this vegan bakery and the apothecary as a, another way to expand our business. And, and because people also know us through vegan edibles and herbal blends. So we're excited to grow that way too. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Andy. Andy, and this meeting is also, we record all these meetings and uh, if you have any questions that you uh, you want to go back and watch the presentation we can we can make that available to you okay thank you very much uh joseph thank you have a good night
Hi, Tiana uh, Tassinari, you're unmuted if you have any questions or comments. Hi. Hi, yes, I just wanted to speak. My name is Tiana Tassinari. I am also a lifelong Boston resident, uh, born and raised in Eastie, and have had the fortune of knowing Kijana since the ninth grade um, at Boston Latin School. And I just wanted to say that if it wasn't for the Rose Garden this year, I would have not made it through teaching in a pandemic. So to what everybody else has said, this is a true healing um, experience in a time that many of us, if not all of us, need to be healing. Um, Kijana cares deeply about the progress of this entire city. And as a Boston resident, the Rose Garden will be beneficial to this whole city. This is beyond business for Kijana. This is her purpose and we will all be better for it. So I can't wait to see this project happen um, for the sake of your community, our community as a city. And um, thank you for everything that you've done for me and for so many people, Kijana. Thank you, Tiana. Thanks, Tiana. I'm gonna get to some of the people that have called in. So I'm gonna call out the first six digits of your phone number and uh, <clears throat> call in user 617-306. You're unmuted. I don't have your last four of your phone number, so I only have 617-306. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to the next call in user 781706. You're unmuted. Call in user 781706. All right, last call out 781706. Hi, call in user 339226. Call in user 339-226, you're unmuted. Hi, Emily Kohler, you put your hand up, you had a question? Um, I just wasn't sure uh, uh, if you were switched past all the uh, um, computer connections, uh, if I had been skipped over. Uh, I just had a comment if it's okay. So I, I'm just working my way through everybody that's had their hand up and then uh, I just went through everybody that called in, but nobody seems to be responsive. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to go ahead. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Um, uh, so I think I, uh, I just had a, a, a quick comment. I hope that will hopefully I take together a few threads and also maybe answer a few concerns that I've heard come up so far on the call. Um, so the reason I am familiar with INI Rose Garden is I'm actually um, one of the people who originally knew her through a one-off uh, yoga event that happened on Newberry Street. Um, and I was looking for something to do that day and I walked in um, and that was the first ever experience I had had with uh, uh, what she was practicing at that time, which was a yoga and a healing medicine based uh, ganja practice. Um, and just the whole experience, I was blown away. And when I later, uh, looked up her business and where it was located and how far we would have to travel for the next class. Um, I was a little appalled because um, it meant a couple more transfers on the T than I usually like, but I figured it out and I was happy to do it because uh, it was just an absolutely wonderful experience. And I think it also, um, this is the first time that I have seen this vision. Um, I unfortunately, since COVID have not been able to uh, keep in touch uh, with the business as much as I'd have liked, but um, seeing this presentation, it makes perfect sense um, to position herself as a uh, luxury baker, uh, excuse me, luxury bakery and apothecary 
style business, I think um, it makes perfect sense given the uh, a care in all of her previous uh, work, um, and I think it also makes perfect sense uh, uh, moving forward into a post-COVID business landscape, um, hopefully with Roslindale continuing to, uh, to grow. I think, um, as a, a previous caller mentioned, you know, I am one of these people that is not from the community. I've never been to Roslindale before Kiana's classes and being honest I probably would never have continued to visit you know it's um the, the thing the Kiana's classes were my draw and I think I am also one of those cannabis consumers that I think is quite representative of her customers in that I am cognizant, like, you know, you've heard of another callers, you know, we are cognizant of our impact on the community. We try to mitigate that where we can, you know, you've heard uh, several different callers hit several of the same points. And then, you know, that's for a reason, you know, we, um, we want to um, represent uh, ourselves well, um, and I think uh, uh, it, it also, uh, I think it's also worth emphasizing here that uh, the luxury brand positioning is key, you know, uh, the traffic impact will probably be uh, uh, both minimal, but also change, if that makes sense. You know, in a post-COVID landscape, I can't be the only one who is going to be planning my trips very carefully, and I'm going to try to hit a couple places in a single trip, and hopefully they'll all be in the same area. So if I'm driving, I can park my car in a single place and hit them all or take a T, hit them all and go home. Um, I think... Uh, also relevant uh, here is the fact that, you know, I used to live in East Boston. Um, I lived there for years and I've seen how it's changed. Uh, and, you know, I've seen the impact on parking that and traffic that the luxury apartments have had. Have had. Now I live in Chelsea and I've seen the impact the casino has had. You know, there are really, uh, obviously, uh, if you don't plan the infrastructure, Traffic is an inevitable impact. Impact. Um, that being said, uh, I'm intrigued by Kiana's, as she mentioned, she has a staged approach. So I'm intrigued by um, what that might look like. Uh, but I think something important to note there is that it's very responsive. So as you know, more and more people start showing up. Um, the assumption will be that uh, there will be uh, other changes in the community, hopefully other business, other um, community, excuse me, community members like yourselves will be able to convince your representatives that they do need to invest in the infrastructure to improve the roadways. You know, that's, that's something that is, um, you know, unfortunately, as I said, in East Boston and Chelsea, we also don't have great infrastructure, and I think there are a few common threads there um, along who's traveling along those roads. Um, and I think to sort of bring my comment uh, to a close and full circle, um, I did visit California and I saw the extremely profitable money first business centric model that they have earned a lot of money out there. And I think uh, I think the vision that I and I Rose Garden is uh, very different. It is centered in healing. It's centered in, um, you know, this, uh, you know, it sounds kind of silly that a uh, bakery treat is healing, but, you know, my husband uh, has epilepsy and, you know, it is healing in a very literal sense uh, for some of us. Uh, and Emily, you know, with, all, Emily, with all due respect, I'm gonna have to cut you off there and get to the next couple of people, okay? Absolutely, thank you for the opportunity. Comments.
Thank you, Emily. Hi, Lauren W. You're unmuted. Okay. Lauren, you had your hand raised. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Hi, sorry <laughs> about that, guys. Um, I just wanted to jump in and say that that was a brilliant presentation by Kijana. Thank you for your time and information. I think what I've taken from all of this is that your care for your community, it, it shines through everything that you've been working on. Um, Roslindale is very lucky to have such an intelligent and dedicated healer. Um, I think that I and I is the representation of quality luxury. Um, it's a full 360 healing experience within your community and you are the only businesswoman for this. I think the market space is there for you and not some big corporate leech that's going to come in and take more than it can give. Um, as another woman of color, I just want to express my deep support for your business, your business model. I hear the flags that people are raising for traffic. I think you've answered those questions with, again, a fantastic business plan around an appointment based model and overall, I think you've thought of everything that can be thought of and you will be the person to give back to your community. So very proud of you fully support this and wishing you the best, my dear. Thank you. Hi, Doris. Yeah, finally. <laughs> I, I knew you asked. I wasn't sure if I got to yet. I had a, I've been through a lot of people here. Yo, you have a glamour way to go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Doris Cherry Francis. And since I met Tishana, she impacted my life. She impressed me because her uh, uh, energy, positive energy, and I am I'm very glad that she is coming with such a good idea of this story. I encourage ladies, women to start their own business, not for the money, Oh, but for the empower, the power because we as a women need to do something for ourselves. And she's not doing this for herself, but for, for the community. And she's not doing this because she's a black lady or because she needs money or, or because this is not the point. She wants to help the community uh, bring us wellness, healing, and love to each other, rather than fight for the parking uh, spaces or whatever. I I want to congratulate her, and I ask the city to give her the chance to establish her store. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris. Sorry it took so long to get to you. Don't oh, worry. I'm happy to hear everything. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Kathy Slade, you're on mute. Do you have any questions or comments? Oh, no, right now. No, thanks. Okay. Just we listen don't... to Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hi, so uh, someone just put in a question in the uh, Q&A, how to find the recording of this presentation. It's going to be upload it to our uh, to the YouTube page. Um, I should be able to do it as of tomorrow. First thing tomorrow morning, um, you'll be able to find it there. And you can also reach out to me and I can provide you with the, the link for this recording if you have any questions and want to go back and rewatch it. Just muted myself. At this time, we don't have any further hands up doesn't seem like anybody else has any questions at the moment. Um, we can go ahead and end the meeting. It's been a, roughly an hour and a half at this point. Um, like I said at the beginning, thank you all for coming out. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments after the fact, my, con my contact information was provided to you via the flyer. Um, if you need, you know, follow up with Kajan, you know, 
please, please reach out to me and I can connect to both of you. Um, and again, I just want to say thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, Kijana, did you want to say anything in closing? I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that came out, everyone that voiced their comments, concerns, everything. We hear you. We're so excited to be in this neighborhood. I hope people will continue to come and collaborate with me. I'm, I'm here for that. So thank you, Joe, also for all your work on this and getting us to this point. There's a lot of you know steps in this and, and you've been so diligent. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. And thank you to you too for putting this together and doing the hard work and for everybody joining joining in tonight. Um, like I said, any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. And other than that, have a good night, everybody. Thank you.